one of the apes that lived in uh, East Asia at the time was Gigantopithecus. Did you come uh, across any of that in your of research? Of course, yes. I think that's been a heavily discussed thing that I've seen, at least, of, of uh, what could po you know, be Bigfoot, at least, or, or the explanation for Bigfoot is this giant ape, right? Um, which I don't know if it was uh, bipedal. I don't know if it really did that. But it, I guess this is what people were like to refer to when they're discussing Bigfoot, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, and we can thank uh, an anthropologist named Grover Krantz for that. He was uh, an anthropologist who was working through the 70s and 80s mostly, I think. Uh huh. And he was very interested in Bigfoot, and I think he was a good friend of John Green. Uh, so I think they collaborated on a lot of stuff. I think I hear, is there some spite, uh, academic spite I hear in your voice uh, for this guy? Or is this... Uh, oh, no, absolutely. I, I uh, you know, I, I, I've never cited his work in an anthropological sense, so I only know him in a Bigfoot sense, really. Yeah. Uh, but um, no, I have no problems with him. I think it's great. I think that... Oh, okay. uh, I if, you said, if I thought we have him to any, thank for this uh, this correlation or this connection, but <laughs> if if I thought there was actual research I could be doing on Bigfoot, then I would absolutely be doing it. It's just that there's nothing for me to work on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Uh, if there's any spite, the spite would be in that. Um, so he believed Bigfoot existed, and he wanted to um, he wanted to name it. And he thought that it was probably closely related to Gigantopithecus because Gigantopithecus was um, rel a relative of orangutans and it lived in China and East Asia. And mm -hmm. based on the fossils, it was probably about the size of uh, a Bigfoot. It's bigger than a gorilla. And that makes it the biggest uh, known ape that ever existed. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so Grover Krantz thought that uh, Bigfoot in North America could be a descendant of Gigantopithecus that crossed through Beringia with all these other populations. Okay. And he tried to actually name Bigfoot scientifically. He wanted to name it Gigantopithecus canadensis, Canadian Gigantopithecus. Oh, okay. Okay. And so he tried to, to give it that name. And there's actually a uh, international uh, convention on zoological nomenclature, the ICZN, or ICZN, I guess okay. you're... American. So they told him, which is still the rule today, that you can't name an animal if you don't have a physical specimen of the animal. <laughs> and this is what we call a type specimen. And so this, we, deal, we deal with this in paleoanthropology, because if you find a new fossil, if you want to give it a new name, a new species name, the, the fossil that you found becomes the type specimen, which means that in the future, if you want to determine if something belongs to that species, you have to compare it to the type specimen. Oh, okay. You can't compare it to anything else. So the type specimen is what defines the, the morphology of, of that species. And so they, called him, they told him you can't name Gigantopithecus a species unless you have a type specimen because then how is anybody going to compare it, like new specimens to it, to determine if it's the same species, right? Uh-huh. Anyway, the reason that if, if you sense some spite, it could be that Gigantopithecus wasn't bipedal, and we don't have any evidence of that. And the reason is because uh, the fossil record of Gigantopithecus is only teeth and like one or two jaw bones. Mm, okay. uh, we don't have any skulls, we don't have any, we don't have any bones below the neck, just teeth and jaw bones. So that's enough to know that it was an ape. Uh -huh. uh, it's enough to know that it was similar to an orangutan or a gorilla and enough to get some sense of size because like the jaw bone of Gigantopithecus is like this big. Yeah. But there's no evidence that it's bipedal based on that. It looks exactly like, you know, you'd expect for a, a quadrupedal ape like a, a gorilla or an orangutan. Uh, yeah. So the, the whole reason that Gigantopithecus is potentially an ancestor of Bigfoot is just because it's very big. Uh, it lived in Asia, so it, it could connect the Yeti myth with the Bigfoot myth through the Bering Land Bridge. Vaguely plausible, but once again, there's just no evidence of that at all.